Awesome. It looks like we are going live on YouTube as well. Great, great guys. So thanks for thanks for joining. We are going to um, talk about uh, recruiting IT professionals uh, globally, internationally, and uh, what kind of mistakes to avoid. Okay, so uh, feel free to ask questions here on Zoom. You can um, just ask questions on uh, YouTube as well in the uh, uh, sidebar, and I'll respond to questions. Um, so let's kick it off. Uh, the uh, quick agenda, I'll um, send you the ebook uh, as a little gift uh, for you guys who have uh, signed up for this webinar. Uh, the ebook that I just um, wrote, when was it? Two months, three months ago? Gosh, time flies like crazy. We will go through a little introduction, and then the three secrets, and then some uh, questions answers. So this is the, the ebook, How to Recruit IT Candidates Globally and Thrive in 2022. It's about 50 page long, so I'll send you via email. Um, cool. So uh, the first thing I would like to mention is that if you are struggling to fill IT positions and interact with candidates, it is probably not your fault, really, because there is a lot of information out there and IT can be very confusing. There are all these IT terms, the IT roles, acronyms, programming languages, software frameworks. So it is okay not to know everything. So if you've been concerned in the past that you just cannot succeed in the international IT recruitment, I want to put those fears to rest for a while because IT is the same whether you are in the United States or in Australia, in Europe, Canada, Asia, or India. Where are you guys from, by the way? Uh, any Camille, Frederick, Larry, Marcy, and Miriam, where are you guys from? Just let me know in uh, chat. I'm now in Slovakia. Martin in Poland, Canada, any, awesome, awesome. So IT is the same, whether you are in Canada or the United States or in Asia, Singapore or France, like Miriam, Montreal, awesome, awesome, wonderful. So good for us, right? IT is the same. They use the same programming languages, the same tools. And uh, because of, or probably thanks to COVID-19, even more IT professionals work remotely. Uh, so you can thrive in IT recruitment. Probably you just need the right person to explain it to you. And when I say it, I mean uh, it as the whole IT recruitment, but it as IT as well. So information technology. So if you felt, on the other hand, that software developers just hesitate interacting with recruiters, headhunters, you are probably right uh, as well. Uh, software developers don't like talking to recruiters and headhunters who know very little about IT. Uh, but that's why we are here today, right? So I assume you want to fill more vacancies and uh, earn lots of money. And I want to show you how to make that happen during this webinar. So if you are an independent recruiter or you work for a recruitment agency, you will learn how to increase your commissions. Uh, who of you guys here is an independent recruiter? Just let me know. And uh, those of you who work for staffing agencies, just indicate it somehow. You know, you can write the name of the agency or just write agency. And if you work as an internal HR manager or talent acquisition specialist, you will learn how to get candidates to apply for your vacancies. So my goal from this web class is to explain why the best way to engage with hiring managers and IT candidates is when you actually understand the IT landscape and why the best way to increase your income is by working smarter, not harder. So let me briefly introduce myself before we uh, get to those uh, strategies. So I'm Michael. I've been in IT for the last uh, 17 years. I have co-founded three companies and grew one of them to about $70 million in annual revenues. So I'm an IT recruiter. Um, I used to be an IT director, a CTO, a software developer. I have trained over 30,000 IT and HR professionals online. Uh, this is uh, me with my wife. We like to drink uh, white wine or sparkling wine with my two kids. It's uh, so much fun with them. Uh, this is how we like to screen candidates. You know, I'm reviewing some CVs and uh, they 
uh, draw something nice uh, next to me. Uh, we like to uh, enjoy it outdoors as well. Sometimes it gets a bit dangerous, uh, but uh, this is what I, I, I probably enjoy you know, uh, most. Uh, I just take a book and uh, the paper book and uh, either read something or write notes. Uh, so when I was uh, back in Thailand, this uh, was the, the team that um, um, also included the uh, product and data and um, IT uh, specialists. So um, you can see me somewhere there in the back. Um, we were working on a travel tech software solution. So I thrive when I'm interacting with developers. I organize meetups and hackathons such as this one for about 150 software developers. And uh, eventually I recruited and hired many of them. So lots of my colleagues relocated from uh, different countries and continents to Thailand, to Bangkok, uh, from the United States, from the UK, uh, a few European countries, uh, even from Australia and New Zealand. So uh, Bangkok is quite an attractive destination. Um, and I realized that is what I'm, I'm actually good at. That's what I enjoy and I should do more of. So then I relocated back to Europe. And in 2018, I started an IT recruitment company. So with my colleagues, we created courses for recruiters. We consulted for other staffing agencies. And over time, I trained and onboarded hundreds of tech recruiters. Uh, so um, to date, uh, my training and uh, consulting clients include uh, recruitment agencies, startups, corporations in the United States or Europe, like Accenture, Experis, Kelly Services, uh, Manpower. Um, so uh, before COVID, they invited me to train their IT specialists uh, or HR specialists on site, but now it is mostly online, like now. Um, so uh, through Zoom, through webinars and uh, worksheets, video courses. And uh, today I also run an international IT recruitment agency with about 50 in-house and external recruiters. All of them specialize in IT, IT recruitment. So uh, you may be wondering why I'm telling you all of this. Why is it important? Well, because this experience allowed me to observe what and how do other recruiters and recruitment uh, agencies in IT, specifically in IT do, what mistakes do they make and uh, how we all can avoid them. So let's cut to the meat of the matter. Uh, there are these three secrets or strategies uh, that we will cover. So what common mistake to avoid when posting job descriptions online? Number two, what important mistake to avoid when messaging potential candidates on LinkedIn? And number three, why not to leave money on the table and earn additional commissions or bonuses instead. Cool, so starting with the first one, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask um, um, either in chat here on Zoom, or if you are on YouTube, then uh, in the sidebar in the comments section. So uh, let me tell you what happened um, roughly two years ago. After I relocated from Thailand to Europe, a CEO from a local startup called me and mentioned they cannot find a backend developer. And I was like, how can you not find a backend developer? There are just so many of them. I looked at their JD and I sort of immediately saw what was wrong. So this was the JD and it included what was already obvious. See just the first sentence. We are looking for a PHP developer responsible for managing backend services and the interchange of data between the server and the user. And I was like, well, just this is obvious. Every PHP developer does exactly this. Um, and um, the second sentence as well, uh, the third sentence of the same. So they sort of just re uh, reiterated what was already obvious. That's what pretty much every PHP developer does because that's what PHP is for. They only focused on some of the hard skills, nothing really interesting, no abilities, or um, who is it really a good fit for. Uh, they focused on very detailed skills. Uh, so it was really, really messy. And uh, also the formatting was not very appealing. So then we sat down, I rewrote it in half an hour. And uh, this was the result. Something that was closer to a job advertisement or role advertisement. So from the typical job description, job requirement to a more appealing job pitch, job advertisement which um, I started with uh, senior PHP full-stack developer in Slovakia, anyone. 
Yana is looking for a full stack PHP developer to join her startup's panel. It's written in Symfony. There is obviously backend, frontend database, as you would expect. So I sort of condensed the whole job description to these two sentences. It is um, a full stack PHP uh, written in Symfony. And that is obviously backend, frontend, and database, as any other PHP backend developer would expect. So, um, but what was what was more important was uh, actually the, the following paragraph. This is especially good for developers who prefer working in small teams and are keen to take responsibility for their tech decisions. Spaleo is a funded startup with an MVP. It has the potential to disrupt the way young people travel for leisure and spa treatments. The team has already built companies like Skyrope Airlines, so it is likely you will learn how to build a company along the way. This learning experience may be priceless, right? So, you know, I'm trying to position it as a dream job for someone, for someone who is a senior, but in his current job doesn't have the opportunity to make those technical decisions. The, the dream job for someone who would like to work on some, uh, some uh, growing startup, someone who would like to be a part of something cool, something uh, more interesting than some corporate um, uh, software product. And um, uh, they got several applicants the next day. And uh, only within seven days, they extended an offer to their ideal candidate who eventually worked there for about one and a half years. And um, it was successful because it really resonated with the right audience, with the right candidate. I was talking to the candidate uh, who was hired uh, eventually. And um, I, was, I was asking what was the reason why he accepted the offer. And uh, he mentioned it's not because of the salary, of course. It was um, not that appealing. But he said that he was looking for some opportunities where he could be the software architect. If he designs some other established company, some larger organization, they would have software architects. And um, he would just do what the software architect uh, comes up with. But he wanted to join some smaller company so that he would be the software architect um, making the technical decisions, which, by the way, goes back to the second or third paragraph, if we also count the initial hook. So this is especially good for developers who prefer working for small teams and are keen to take responsibility for their tech decisions. So this was the part that uh, he found most appealing eventually. Um, however, if the opposite is happening on the market these days, which causes lots of frustration. So uh, imagine there is Joe, some developer, Java, PHP, whatever he receives or she, um, Jane, uh, receives uh, a message on LinkedIn in the morning. Hey, Joe, we are hiring. We are looking for a developer. And then at 10 a.m. he receives another message. Hey, Joe, we are hiring. We are looking for a developer. And then he receives another message. Hey, Joe, we are looking for a developer. Joe, we are hiring in the afternoon once or twice. So really crazy what's going on um, on LinkedIn and even um, you know, um, elsewhere, which causes lots of frustration, especially when those messages are just generic templates. When, uh, you know, just look at this, this uh, job posting. You can go to any job board. Uh, this is a screenshot from... What is it? Indeed. Yeah, this is indeed. Um, this is another example. And like really who today has has time and the capacity to go through some of these. And also given the fact that now software developers have the opportunity to work remotely. So they have thousands and thousands of openings available and no one has time to just compare them this way and uh, go through the fluff. Uh, and this is just another example. Um, as, as Larry mentions, yeah, condensed information, detailed environment, growth opportunities. Exactly, exactly. And there is, there is more to it. There is more about the product, about the technical stack, like how to pitch the opportunity. That's uh, actually something I, I dedicate uh, the whole 90-minute block during the tech recruitment program. Like how to position the opportunity so that developers are really excited about it. So imagine you are the developer. How would you feel if you received 30 similar messages per week? And especially if they were not targeted properly. If, if uh, say, a Java developer receives 
a message uh, that they are looking for a JavaScript developer, which looks like not such a big difference, right? But it's a completely different programming language. It's like sending to a, a, a translator, you know, someone who translates from English to French, it's like to send a message, hey, uh, dear translator, we are looking for someone to translate this to, to Chinese. It's like the person would also look like, well, why are you sending me this message? Like on my profile is written that I'm a translator from English to, to French. So um, I later went on to interview my IT friends and colleagues to figure out what exactly are they actually interested in. And uh, this is just one of uh, what, like 30, 40 mind maps that, uh, that I have created. And they are also in the booklet of, of mind maps. But if you, if you would like to check it out, you can just go to itrecruitermindmaps.com. Hopefully there is no typo as I'm just typing it. So um, um, what, what exactly are they interested in? What should we highlight? It is the technical stack. They want to know what are the must-have skills. Usually just three, not more than three must-have skills. Uh, with regards to software developers, it is the programming language and the framework. So coming back to our example here, it would be PHP is the programming language and Symfony is the software framework. And that's pretty much all that the uh, senior PHP developer needs to know. There is you know, PHP language, Symfony framework, and then the rest exactly as you would expect. So um, uh, then work methodology. What is the level of adoption of the best practices? What is the uh, DevOps setup? Uh, the cloud infrastructure, uh, software development methodology, Scrum or Kanban. They want to know about the team, about the size of the team, uh, the seniority of team members. Uh, they want to know if there are any A players, any superstars on, uh, on the team. Um, if there is any technical lead to guide the person uh, and mentor. What's the length of the project, the scope? So uh, these are the, the pieces of, of the puzzle that are usually missing on the uh, typical job description because it's really a job description, but it's not the job promotion. So our role in recruitment is to go from the job description to job promotion. Um, copying and pasting these job descriptions without understanding who exactly is the hiring manager looking for is not sustainable strategy, especially these days when IT professionals have so many opportunities. IT specialists don't like it at all. You can see a Java backend developer, Martin. He wrote, I hate HR because they have no idea what they are talking about. They just keep saying Java, CSS, this framework and that, but they have actually zero knowledge about that. They just know the words maybe. So this is exactly the, the problem and the frustration um, uh, on the market. And we are also trying to change it with, uh, with all the materials and the uh, courses and uh, workshops and webinars that we organize. So I talked to dozens of recruiters about this problem and they often tell me that they copy and paste the job requirements or job descriptions because they don't know what do those IT terms mean. So they rather just copy it. And, um, you know, that's probably okay to some extent uh, because no one can really know it all. And uh, also, I don't remember all the IT terminology because it's overwhelming, uh, even for me after 17 years in IT. Um, but um, yeah, there are certain, certain must-haves in IT. And it's really awkward if you, as a recruiter, would not know those uh, basic IT terms. So you are probably wondering how can you do it if you haven't worked in IT for 15 years and you don't know the IT terminology just yet. So I'll walk you through those steps. Um, we could call it your, your key to success or the IT recruiters key to success. And uh, there are these steps that we usually go through. So the first step is to understand the basic IT terminology and acronyms. As I mentioned, you cannot know all the frameworks and uh, because all the time there are new ones popping up. But there is a certain set of acronyms, abbreviations, frameworks, languages in IT that a recruiter just needs to be aware of because otherwise the person cannot screen candidates, cannot talk to hiring managers about the job requirement. Everything is very awkward. 
Second, to learn about the standard IT roles. In IT, there are um, about 70 typical standard IT roles and they have certain, um, certain uh, specifics. Um, and usually uh, these IT professionals use similar tools. They do similar things. So once you start recognizing these patterns, then everything is easier. Number three, learn what tools, what languages, what frameworks do the IT professionals usually use. So um, once you learn what do they use, then you can quickly spot who is doing what, he, if the person is a good fit to a specific opening or not. Number four, learn about common personas and what do they usually prefer and value most. So it uh, comes back to what I noticed while I was working with um, these IT professionals directly. I noticed that some of them thrive in new projects while others uh, hate starting new projects from scratch. Some of them thrive in just a very stable kind of environment where they maintain a project. And uh, then we started developing this concept further and uh, I'll show you a, a few examples of these personas in a minute. Number five, understand company pros and cons from the candidate's standpoint. Because there is a difference if the candidate joins an agency versus uh, um, some uh, product-centric company or a startup. So we in recruitment, we can highlight those advantages so that people get more excited about those opportunities. So just the, the first one, as I mentioned, understand the basic terminology. The good news is that the list of these, um, uh, of, of these terms, the list of the vocabulary is not endless. You can see uh, this mind map with uh, about, uh, what, maybe 50, maybe uh, 80. I haven't counted them, but you can see there is an end uh, to this list. So once you know these basic uh, basic terms like Kanban, Scrum, UX, uh, Design Sprint, MVP, Minimum Viable Product, um, Databases, uh, Programming Languages, Python, Ruby, Java, JavaScript, uh, Technical Stack, uh, Operating System, um, Waterfall, Kanban, etc. Then you will notice that these keep repeating. The tech acronyms another mind map with about uh, 50, 60 acronyms that keep repeating. So I have analyzed um, over a hundred um, job descriptions, job requirements to identify which of the keywords and abbreviations keep repeating. For example, API, uh, JSON, REST, PLSQL, SQL, HTTP, HTML. So you just need to learn these and um, everything will be easier. Uh, number two, identify the um, standard IT roles. For example, backend Java developer or full stack JavaScript developer or a data engineer. So um, once you understand these typical roles, you will be able to categorize IT professionals much easier and faster. You would also learn what tools, what languages, what frameworks do the IT professionals use. For example, if you know that c -sharp .net engineers um, use Xamarin for mobile application development, then anytime you see on someone's profile, CV, resume mentioned Xamarin, then it immediately triggers that um, this person creates mobile applications. Or the other way around, if a hiring manager says that uh, they are looking for a mobile application developer and they use c -sharp, then you go to LinkedIn or any other applicant tracking system and you would put the keyword Xamarin as one of the sourcing keywords to, to source qualified candidates. You would also learn about the common personas. What do they prefer, value most? For example, the uh, builders are people who like to build products and services from scratch. Uh, the uh, crafters are people who have higher coding standards. They like to work on production systems. They like to polish code, document everything properly, cover tests. So these people are good fit for, for different environments. And it's just good to be aware of these differences because then you can pitch those opportunities uh, much better than if you just say like, hey, we are looking for a PHP developer. 
that's just so plain. Um, you would uh, also need to understand the differences uh, between agencies, corporations, and the typical work environment in these companies. So for example, in an agency, they usually work on a variety of projects, while in a startup, it's usually just one product that a developer works on in the long run. So with this in mind, you can come up with a more appealing job pitch when you can say like, hey, um, I have here an opportunity. Uh, if, you, if you are a front-end React developer and you wanted to, uh, to, to um, um, start a project uh, from scratch, then we have a client who is looking for someone to take the MVP to a production-ready product. So uh, they are looking for someone senior to help them transition you know like you can come up with these with these stories and uh, stand out in the crowd eventually so then actually transitioning from the typical boring uh, plain job description to the uh, job advertisement the job pitch it's just so much easier and uh, this is what I really enjoy now like we have we have different clients we have um, lots of lots of openings and at the end of the day when you just look at these through the lenses of the typical roles, you will notice that they are very similar. All Many of them are very similar, even if they are called differently. For example, um, uh, for example, well, like front-end developer or a JavaScript developer, um, it's essentially the same position. But what can help you stand out is when you, when you uh, try to pitch it based on who the client is or what is the project about, who is the particular position a good fit for, what exactly will that person um, do or learn while working for that uh, company or a team. So then eventually recruitment is uh, a lot of fun. You will be able to pitch the vacancies like a pro, really. You will focus on the uh, innovative part of the product or the technology or something interesting about the project something interesting about team members. So there is always something to highlight, which will eventually help you increase your response rates and IT candidates will want to interact with you. So the mistake um, is uh, copying and pasting job requirements that you receive from your clients or hiring managers. And um, just copying these to websites or emails or messages on, on LinkedIn or copying to job boards uh, that's um that's just so um i mean there is so little little added value and then developers they just go to one of these job boards and they cannot differentiate uh, one from the other but when they see something that stands out they're like oh wow cool this is this is so cool they get excited their emotions uh, are triggered and that's when the fun starts so the key is to focus on what the IT professional needs to know, as Larry wrote in the chat. So condense the information. And um, at the same time, you need to add some more information that makes the opportunity unique and exciting. So you can essentially ask, who is this a dream job for? Who would be very excited about this particular opportunity? So there are people who are excited about uh, becoming uh, DevOps engineers in Dubai. There are people who are excited about working remotely for a company in uh, Germany. There are people who are excited about working on site in Poland, in, in Warsaw, for some uh, innovative company. So there are always some people who, who will be excited about the opportunity. And our job in IT recruitment is to help them realize it. So first we need to articulate it and then sell those opportunities to them. So uh, the cool thing is that this, this doesn't just for, for work for me. It works for all kinds of recruiters, talent acquisition specialists, HR managers who already embraced this market shift, like Yui uh, from Thailand, who wrote, for example, on Trustpilot, recently adopted new way of writing job ads, and uh, I got amazing result. So uh, that's, that's really cool. Uh, maybe you are now thinking it's only for those recruiters who speak tech like I do. Um, but the thing is, while I have so many years of experience working in IT, it was in a very 
condensed uh, um, condensed area. Like I only worked with PHP and JavaScript, but uh, now we have clients who are looking for uh, DevOps engineers uh, or which I haven't really worked in DevOps, right? So I also need to just learn it and I need to learn the language specific to that field of IT. I, uh, I'm now recruiting um, uh, system analysts and uh, we didn't really have any system analyst in the team because our company hasn't really reached that level uh, that we would need one. So, um, you know, everything can be learned and um, that's also why we have created these courses, materials and everything, because also my colleagues, they are not coming with this uh, level of IT knowledge. So they go through similar onboarding. And maybe you are now thinking it doesn't work for your clients in the United States or Canada. But the thing is that, as I mentioned, IT is the same. And also the way people consume content is very similar, whether they are in the United States, Canada or, or India, because they are on social media. They um, um, have shorter and shorter attention span, so they don't have time to go through all these uh, job descriptions anymore, especially now with remote work. So we need to get their attention really quick with something compelling, something interesting, something that stands out. Um, so that, that is the case whether you are, as I mentioned, uh, in the United States or in Europe. And we also have clients from the United States, from uh, the Caribbean from uh from dubai from europe as well so um it's very similar really there are some cultural differences of course like with with everything but the core principles uh, apply so uh, the fact is that the it market is changing as we speak the uh, ai driven uh, recruitment software automation uh, demand and supply in equilibrium uh, we need to apply new strategies to fill IT vacancies while building good relationships with IT candidates, which gets us to the uh, strategy number two. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask whether you are on uh, on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, there is one question. Uh, yeah, IT recruiter, fresher, call, call. Um, feel free to ask uh, and then I'll answer later. So actually, I'll... Uh, what mistake to avoid when messaging potential candidates on LinkedIn? So when I started recruiting IT talents, I did exactly what the majority of recruiters do these days. Uh, I activated LinkedIn Premium, uh, LinkedIn Recruiter, and I started sending messages on LinkedIn. But I only uh, after only a few days, I was very frustrated. I felt like I was bothering people. Uh, I uh, didn't really enjoy this activity at all. I uh, felt like quitting because it just felt so annoying. So as an IT person and a digital marketeer, I tried to reverse engineer the process. Like how can I get rid of this activity while still get lots of candidates? So I wanted to avoid the most boring mundane tasks of sending messages while spending most of my time engaging with highly qualified candidates, with those who are already pre-qualified, and I can just call them and talk about the opportunity, get them excited about these opportunities, sell them the dream job. Because I, because I knew that as soon as I'm talking to them on the phone, I can sell them the opportunity at hand very well. So most of the recruiters I worked with uh, focused on sourcing, messaging, as you can see on this uh, uh, chart, at the initial stage of uh, recruitment, sourcing, where there is really little added value. There are some job boards, you can post on job boards, you can source people on LinkedIn, you can headhunt them. Um, however, it takes a lot of time. So a lot of time spent, but very little added value. And someone else can do it as well. So I wanted to focus on these activities where I can add more value. Uh, I can qualify candidates, I can screen them, I can sell them uh, the opportunity. So I went on to set up advertisement campaigns on LinkedIn. I invested about 500 euros uh, in this particular campaign. And uh, as you can see, it brought about uh, 50, 58 leads uh, in total. So um, this was for a VP of engineering. And uh, this is the, the message. So this is not any dark, uh, shady uh, Chrome extension. This is the LinkedIn advertising platform that uh, enables 
advertisers to advertise on LinkedIn. And you can also use it to send whatever other message uh, that you would like to send to those people on LinkedIn. So I uh, sent this particular message, a VP of engineering for a fintech company. You can also add some uh, creative on the right-hand side. So uh, the message was, uh, and the really cool thing is that it also personalizes the message. So uh, in this case, you know, it's first name. I'm just sending the test to myself. So Michal, uh, would you like to lead a team of Java developers in a well-funded fintech company a startup in the Caribbean, just recently acquired by an international corporation? If you are intimately familiar with Java tech stack and would consider relocating to one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean Sea, wow, please leave me your contact details and we will discuss it briefly. FYI, I'm helping their CTO grow their tech team so I can tell you more about the project, the technical stack, the team. In the past, I've lived in Thailand, so I know firsthand what a transformational opportunity this might be for you. Please hit the contact me button, leave me your contact details, and I'll be looking forward to talking to you about this opportunity. Michael, talent advisor, IT consultant. So what is what is really cool, you know, there each sentence has some meaning and, and the reason why it is here. For example, at the beginning, I started with something that hooks their attention. Would you like to lead a team of Java developers? And of course, this was targeted to people who had Java on their profile as a skill, people who were senior IT managers, IT executives um, in a well-funded fintech startup. So fintech, growing industry, well-funded startup. These are quite cool in IT. Just recently acquired by an international corporation in IT. People usually look up to companies that were acquired. So that's why I wrote it this way. If you are familiar with the Java technical stack, and would consider relocating to one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean Sea. So I'm trying to use the location itself as the selling point. Leave me your contact detail. FYI, I'm helping the CTO. So the reason behind this is that I'm not positioning myself as a recruiter, but rather as an IT advisor, tech, tech advisor. Um, and uh, I'm writing this sentence to let the person know that I know a bit more than a typical recruiter would know about the position, the technical stack, the team. And then this uh, other sentence about me living in Thailand, that is there to build some personal connection. So each, each of these sentences, plus also the call to action at the end, each of these sentences has a reason. So it took me some time to write it, you know, try it several times. I spent probably half an hour writing just these few paragraphs until I was really happy with them. But the cool thing is that then within uh, within three days, probably two, three days, uh, two and a half thousand messages were sent, which cost 490 euros. 80% um, of them were opened, 1,845. 58 people opted in. So they left their contact details. 25 of them were good. So I called them. We had about, well, like some of them 15 minutes, uh, some of them half an hour long discussions. 10 of them were good. So I introduced them to the uh, CTO. Five of them were really good. So the CTO asked them to go through technical interviews. Four of them passed the technical interviews. One of them got the offer extended which eventually uh, turned out to be a sweet commission, over 20,000 euros. Well, it was a senior IT position. Uh, so um, yeah, the typical market rate anyway. So um, what is really cool is not just the, the, you know, the commission, of course, but also that I was able to focus on that part of the funnel where I was able to add the uh, most value. I was able to spend little time on this project thanks to the ads campaign on social media. So we are talking about four hours to set it up, three hours to pre-screen, 15 hours to be on calls, six hours technical interviews, two hours set up, probably 50 hours, might maybe 40. So uh, the mistake that I'm, I'm seeing is sending hundreds of the same canned messages on LinkedIn every day, every week, instead of engaging with candidates. 
And there are ways how to avoid this, uh, of course. Um, um, and if you still need to send messages, then at least don't send those same canned messages um, and make sure that you understand what, what you are writing, what you are talking about when you are approaching uh, IT candidates. This strategy uh, doesn't work just for me. Again, it works for other recruiters who join my training, learn how to apply it. Like Ferenc, for example, he's a recruiter from uh, Hungary here in Europe. Uh, he was also sending messages before and then he wrote on Trustpilot. I managed to learn even after 10 years in the tech hiring game. The technique I learned was presented well. I was able to apply it right after on two different search projects. Good leads were generated that ended up in two candidates reaching the offer stage. So it's uh, pretty cool. Um, hard to say how much was it for him in this case. Uh, but uh, yeah, the commissions in, in IT are quite sweet these days. Uh, so maybe you are thinking you cannot do this because you don't know anything about marketing. But the thing is, you don't have to be a marketeer. You just need to be digitally savvy, so to speak. You just uh, need to know how to go to Facebook and LinkedIn and set up these campaigns. It's not rocket science. These uh, companies make it easy to set it up. You just need to be careful. You need to know how to target based on skills or based on other demographics, uh, based on interests um, and uh, specific keywords, the right audience. But then setting it up is not that difficult. Uh, maybe you are afraid of spending a few hundreds of euros on ads and it's always a gamble in to some extent. Um, but it depends if your, um, if your upside is uh, substantial. If it is, then, you know, it's just numbers game at the end of the day. You are probably thinking uh, you are too busy to manage your new ad campaign. But the thing is that by having an ad campaign that is generating the traffic for you, the, the leads, you free up time and you can, you know, you don't have to send messages on, on LinkedIn like I mentioned in this specific case. So the, the truth is that IT professionals are sick and tired of recruiters who keep sending them irrelevant messages on LinkedIn. So we need to get better at communicating with uh, prospects and engage with them. So only send relevant messages or then set up advertisement where people don't expect any personal communication because they know it's a, it's a, it's a paid uh, advertisement. Which gets us to the uh, uh, strategy number three. Why not to leave money on the table and earn additional commissions or bonuses instead? So if you guys uh, at any point have any question, then feel free to ask. Um, so if you are anything like me, you wake up in the morning and think, how can I make more money uh, this year? Anyone? Anyone who feels, how can I earn more money this year? If you are an HR specialist or a recruiter, you pretty much only have two options these days, really. Uh, first, get a new job that pays you 20, 30% more. Or second, work harder at your current job. Uh, put in more hours, be more effective, and uh, get some bonuses as, as a result, hopefully. But the first option, I don't know, like getting a new job that pays 20, 30% more is not that easy in IT recruitment. Maybe you don't want to change a job. Maybe um, you are satisfied with your colleagues, with uh, the culture, the company and everything, and you just don't want to change. Uh, the second, you know, working harder at your current job, putting in more hours, maybe not the best idea either, right? Especially if the outcome is not guaranteed. So, um. You know, if you are like most recruiters I work with, you are either employed, like uh, Larry wrote, uh, he's a corporate HR, or you work freelance uh, for a few clients, maybe just one, maybe more, who throw all their JDs at you, job descriptions, job requirements. So you may work eight hours a day, 10, probably 12, but at some point you reach a ceiling of what you can achieve. Like I know recruiters who make a lot of money, but there is a ceiling uh, above above them and they cannot just grow uh, grow past that ceiling because a day only has you know 24 hours um, so the only really effective way is uh, to uh, to increasing your income is by monetizing your network so you can you can monetize the existing network that you've built over time 
you are already connected to IT professionals on LinkedIn. You probably have a database already. Um, and now you can get paid for referring some of those people to real clients. So for example, Zuzana, who joined our recruitment network in uh, September, September 17th, as you can see on this uh, screenshot from Slack. And in October, she submitted her first candidate who was eventually hired by the client in October. Yeah, So that was just three weeks after she joined. Uh, Marek, uh, he was hired uh, and uh, she got a few thousands in commissions uh, just for submitting a software developer who she already knew and had a relationship with, I mean, professional relationship. She's a recruiter. So uh, you can earn on average about three and a half thousand dollars for each placed candidate in, in a good network. And um, a good recruitment network will also help you understand the job requirements. So you know exactly who to look for. They will support you on an ongoing basis. And that's uh, exactly what we do during the uh, sourcing webinars, which I organize on uh, Thursdays. So tomorrow is the uh, next one at 5 p.m. Central European time. So an hour earlier than we started today, we uh, go through different openings that we have from our clients and we look at how to find the candidate, what keywords to use, how to come up with an efficient Boolean search, how to target uh, product managers who focus on web scraping or how to find senior Python Django engineers, what keywords to use to find I know, uh, C Sharp .NET developers with 3D graphics experience, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the mistake that um, you know, I would like to, to uh, warn you about or, or to mention is that you may be leaving money on the table. You already have very valuable relationships with IT professionals and you just need to look for different ways how to monetize these relationships. Maybe you have a few thousands of connections on LinkedIn Maybe you have a spreadsheet. Maybe you have an ATS already, some personal one. And um, yeah, you may be leaving money on the table if you don't submit these candidates uh, to, some, uh, to some network. And I happen to run the, the network, as I mentioned. We can also discuss if uh, this would be a good fit for you. So some of the recent payments are 3,800 euros to a recruiter in uh, South African Republic which is about what, like $4,200, $3,200 uh, to a recruiter in Germany. Again, $3,500, 3,000 euros to a recruiter in Slovakia. So um, yeah, it uh, could be a nice, nice addition to your, your regular salary. All of the money just for a few hours of work per week. And um, I'm not saying, you know, it's guaranteed, of course, by any means, uh, it is for a placed candidate. So uh, if a candidate is placed, then of course we get paid and you get paid uh, really quick as well. So um, yeah, before we go to, to questions, um, I have a question, a quick poll. So um, would you guys like to, uh, number one, fill more IT vacancies, earn more money on the side or both? And you can just uh, let me know in chat one, two, or three. Just uh, ping me also on uh, YouTube. One, two, or three. What would you guys uh, prefer? Uh, Larry wrote both. Well, yeah, we are on the same page here, so that's uh, that's very cool. So um, yeah, yeah, three, three. Mm, okay, okay. Also, Martin here on Zoom, he wrote three. Yeah, on YouTube also. Cool, cool. Well, in, in this case, yeah, it's, it seems like we are, we are like-minded here. And that's, um, that's uh, yeah, like that's what my wife also uh, you know, tells me here and there. She cannot really escape this. So um, yeah, uh, can, I, can I show you a few options of how, how can I help uh, you or your team? We have uh, a, few, um, a few materials uh, that... Um, I have created, I already showed you the mind maps. Uh, we organize um, some uh, program, training program for IT recruiters. Actually, the next one starts on Monday. It's a three week long program where we go through the um, IT terminology and the recruitment strategies in depth. It's, it's a three week long program. 
So if you would like to discuss it, then let me know. I can show you a few, uh, a few uh, pages or, or a website and also on YouTube. Just let me know, yes or no. Otherwise, uh, feel free to ask any question. Oh, yes, on YouTube. All right, all right, cool. So uh, I'll just show you really quick uh, that, you know, I after working with these uh, staffing agencies, some of them from Europe, some of them from uh, the United States, some of them international, some of them local, I, I discovered that it's really, it's really important. This IT, I mean, not important, but it's really difficult. This IT recruitment is uh, is difficult, very difficult for people who don't follow certain certain steps, certain methodology, and they don't understand the relationships between the uh, IT uh, technologies. Um, so the key to success when it comes to technical recruitment is analyzing technical job descriptions, job requirements. Uh, of course, screening candidates and matching with, uh, with um, requirements. And uh, for that, we have these building blocks. So it all starts with the strong IT foundation, the IT roles, the related IT terminology. My colleagues have to go through very thorough uh, onboarding and checklist to make sure that they know what is uh, Xamarin, as I mentioned, or ASP.NET, or what does it mean, like FE or BE, when someone has it on a profile. Sometimes we just take a screenshot of a communication with... Uh, a developer, and we just look at what do those IT uh, abbreviations mean. Second, analyzing IT job requirements. I've seen a lot of uh, recruiters um, skip this part. They just take it for granted. It's like, okay, here is a job description, job requirement. Let me just start working on it. And then they waste three weeks. They don't have any candidate. And then they are frustrated and disappointed. So this is crucial step. This is what I... Uh, uh, this is an, an area where I spend most time um, when I'm onboarding a new client, when we have a new uh, opening, screening candidates. Um, also, it comes back to um, screening questions, self-assessment questions, um, submission notes to, um, to clients. So how to um, promote on, on the social media to get more candidates, and then of course, monetizing your network. So for that, we have different materials. I have created this uh, booklet with mind maps, as you can see it here, and I always keep it somewhere at hand. So this is the uh, the booklet. There are about 40 different mind maps. I even recorded videos with, with all of these mind maps. So it's, uh, it's really cool, like we, like, is just, I use it, like I use it because I don't remember all these terms. But when I, for example, have um, an interview with, uh, with a DevOps engineer, I just open up a mind map on the page number. I don't, I don't recall now from the top of my mind, but I open up the page where there is the DevOps landscape. And then I just ask questions related to what I see on the mind map. So the mind maps are very cool. The IT Talents book, the uh, clear job requirements focuses on analyzing job requirements, screening candidates, uh, getting more candidates using social media, and uh, you could also join our, our recruitment network if you'd like to, uh, to submit uh, uh, some candidates and uh, get some money on the site. So um, I organize a training program, a very comprehensive program, actually our best program uh, course uh, that I organize every three months. It is... Uh, on the website, uh, techrecruitmentprogram.com. You can uh, check it out right here. Uh, hold a sec, I need to send, yeah. Uh, the mind maps are right here. And we have also academy, academy membership where I also interview, um, interview other recruiters uh, I record uh, lots of webinars dedicated to a specific problem, for example, sourcing um, DevOps engineers or sourcing uh, data engineers. And uh, we have all the replays and everything available. So it's some kind of a support platform for IT recruiters. So um, 
yeah, very cool stuff is happening over there as well. Uh, so we have a, a great community of practitioners over there. So um, yeah, if, if you guys have any questions, then feel free to ask. I see one question. Um, oh yeah, um, Larry asks, I could possibly be working for uh, Boeing. How hard it will be to stand out in a renowned company with JDs? Um, well, it sort of depends if you if you have the flexibility to tweak the job description, the job requirement slightly. I mean, not the not the substance of it. Of course, they will be looking for a developer with certain must-haves. But the way you present it to the uh, candidates, like, do you have the flexibility? Can you change it? Can you tweak it? Uh, does anyone care? If not, then that's great. But I know that some companies don't allow any any changes in the, in the presentation, which would be really unfortunate. I mean, uh, that um, that is just, um, yeah, for some reasons, I don't know, uh, some uh, branding or whatever, marketing reasons. But that, that just sucks because, you know, uh, what, what we do, for example, for our clients, they send us their job description. Like, hey, we are looking for a developer with these skills. And then we look at it and we create something else, something that we put to a website, we promote on social media, something that we rephrase. We even change the title of the role. Sometimes they say mm, software engineer and it's just way too vague. So we change it to a backend PHP a developer, something that is more straightforward, right? Because we have the flexibility. So, um, so, so just uh, thinking out aloud, if you have this flexibility, then, you know, then it's great. And also the fact that you work for Boeing itself, everyone knows this company. So um, it, it, will be, it will be easier to attract uh, some, some people to work uh, in this case. So um, if, you, if you are starting in Boeing, somewhere I saw that you are starting in Boeing. So why don't you join the program on Monday? Uh, the link is in chat and uh, we will actually go through the whole process. We will go through... Uh, first, of course, the IT terminology, but we will also go through the whole promotion process. So how to take the role, how to tweak it, how to make it more appealing to IT professionals and how to uh, eventually uh, get, get them interested. So um, I don't have it on uh, the slides now, but um, during the program, I show examples of exactly how we do it, how I position it, uh, what kind of, you know, there is a transcript um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just reading your, your message on uh, chat. So uh, there is, um, well, what I was saying. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So there are screenshots of how we position it, also a video and a transcript of what exactly uh, do I say, how do I pitch it. So, uh, so during the program, you would uh, discover it all. Okay, so... Um, just don't wait for too long, by the way, with these uh, tickets, because uh, uh, today I was sending an email to people who have uh, who had uh, pre-booked some tickets and we only had two left. So um, just don't leave it for the last minute because, uh, you know, the, the previous ones, we always kept it to 20 people um, because um, we want to make it more engaging and uh, interactive with uh, the audience. It's not like now. Now this is just a webinar where I talk and you are here. Uh, but uh, during the program, it's a meeting where everyone is uh, with camera on, there's talk. And not, I mean, not just, I have slides, but um, there are moments we can talk and be more um, interacting together. So that's why we limit it to 20 people and um, probably 18 or so tickets are sold by now. So uh, just don't leave it for the last moment. Cool, cool, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, great, so uh, if you guys have any questions, then uh, feel free to ask. I just saw one only in uh, the uh, Q&A bar and I just responded it, so that's good. No other open questions. I guess uh, we can wrap it up. So uh, thanks guys for, for joining. Um, 
I hope to see some of you uh, during the uh, the program or uh, check out the mind maps or just uh, join the academy based on what what works better for you and uh, we'll be in touch have a wonderful day and uh yeah let's go back to recruiting <laughs>